my first visit to the to the Ambassador Hotel would mostly have just been the outside of the hotel. It took a long time before I ever got inside the hotel. But I used to always go down and like walk around it as much as I could, as close as I could get to it, because it depended where the fences were at different times in you know, different years, because they were getting to tear it down and not tear it down. But it's always been closed as far as my memory is concerned. And so I've always been able to just get as close to it as I can and try to take pictures of it. So I've tried to document it that way. And then, um, you know, then I finally got a chance to go inside once. And that's really, that's really, really interesting. And that was right before I was torn down. So that was my first time, I guess, if I had to put a year on it, I don't know. Uh, I've been out here for 35 years. It was probably about 20 years ago when I first started. So maybe 25, 26 years ago that I first started to really try to get as close as I could. And I made it my goal to try to get inside any way that I could. And uh, why were you trying to get inside and what drew you to the ambassador? Well, there were several things. It was a very, very historic hotel, but there were a couple of key things. And mostly the biggest, of course, would be the assassination of Robert Kennedy. 68. That's something that's seared in our history, seared in my mind as a young boy when it happened. And I always had these pictures in my head of, you know, the pictures that you've seen of him lying there after, you know, where it happened and the speech that he gave right before it, where that took place. So I wanted to, I, I like to visit history, especially history that I recall for myself. And uh, I just wanted to see that. And, there, and the fact, you know, there was the allure of the fact that it had been closed all these years and it was just, it's only it was used for filming, which is another part of the interest I have in it. I'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, I was, uh, I was just always drawn to it because it, it was forbidden, sort of. It was closed to me, so therefore I wanted it more. You want what you can't have. You, you reach for what is just out of reach. So uh, getting inside became like a holy grail for me, mm -hmm. just for, you know, the history of the hotel and the fact that it hadn't been open for many, many, many years, except as a uh, film location, mostly. And when you finally did get in, what did you see? It was like, kind of like walking through a ghost town and kind of like walking through a uh, movie set. Everything, it was like uh, it had been frozen in time. I think it closed in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. I, I should have looked that up before I came here, but it closed around then. But uh, it's like frozen in time. Everything looks very like 50s ish. And it says coffee shop on the outside. And inside you can see abandoned booths and a cash register on a counter. It's an empty coffee shop, a hair salon, a tobacco store. Uh, these different things are on the main floor of the hotel along with the uh, lobby, the registration area, which I recognize from the film The Graduate. Key film, scenes were filmed there in the lobby of the. Uh, that's where Dustin Hoffman goes to have his affair with uh, and Bancroft, Mrs. Robinson. Mm -hmm. And Buck Henry, is, who co wrote the screenplay, is behind the counter there. You recognize the counter, you see it, the registration is. And Buck Henry says to him, You know, are you here for an affair? You remember that? So it's, it took place right there. So that was part of my interest in it. And, um, and then, like I said, the, uh, the Kennedy assassination, that was a whole different aspect. And the Coconut Grove, too, was a part of the Ambassador Hotel. It was a very uh, famous nightclub in its day, and a lot of things uh, were filmed there, or took place there, and uh, you know, so it was the big celebrity hangout at the time, back in the 20s, 30s, 40s. There were bungalows around the uh, lawn of the ambassador, and people like Howard Hughes or John Barrymore would at the time live in those bungalows. So there was a lot of history. Mm -hmm. 